from Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. We're glad to have you with us for this very special edition of Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Pinnacle Financial Partners, official bank of your Tennessee Titans. Go to titansbanking.com to learn more about Pinnacle's winning plays. Pinnacle Financial Partners, member FDIC. With Amy Wells and Mr. Monday Night Keith Bullock, we're glad to have you uh, in our new studio. Is that what makes it special, Mike? I think it is. It's <laughs> the first time we've ever done a live radio show in our studio, our new studio here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, and it's pretty great. It is pretty great. I think it's cool. I feel like it's very cozy. Cozy know? is what we were going well, for. Well, and that's what Amy wanted in the design. I, and yeah, it's not done I see the, yet. The, <laughs> the warm moonlights and well, stuff. Well, I liked so. <laughs> Do you feel cozy? Yeah, I told you. So cozy. I like the white brick, which you can't mm -hmm. see on the radio, obviously, which is. You know, it doesn't help you at all. But we'll just, post pictures. Just pretend. Oh, yeah, we'll post, <laughs> we'll post pictures mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but it is, and it's going to be even more cozy. We're going to have a whole other section with sort of a, a couch area and kind of a Are coffee bar. Are we going to have guests or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. We can. If you'd like to have guests. Hey, Shoot, you I, can host parties in here if you want yes, to. Like, whatever you want. We rent it out. <laughs> a podcast party would be very interesting. A podcast know? party would be very yeah, interesting. Or a radio show, Titans radio show, radio party. Radio party. I mean, look, you got the studio. You can create whatever you want. Well, we've yep. never been able to host because we just didn't have the, the facility. Hey, and got it now. And now, you know, we've got modern touches. Mm -hmm. It's warm. It's lit. It's You know what it's like to me? What's like that? When you, like when, you, when your friend, they get a new car. Yes. And you get in. It's like, man, this is nice. Yeah. You touch everything. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. how I <laughs> look around. Yeah. I roll down my window. Hey, y'all, oh, y'all see me in here? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how we are. Well, people Word. walk by. We got and video they video now. What, mm -hmm. What's so great is people walk by. There's glass in the door. Right. And people walk by and they see us talking. And because this is new, they have no idea what we're doing. So they assume we're just in here talking to one another and people will just walk in. It's the best. Well, it's I'm, not that part's not the best. No, but, but they walk in and everybody has a freeze face when yeah, they're like, like oh, oh, I walked in I'm on something. I'm interrupting something. something. They, they oh, don't see the they don't on air light. Working. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody does it. It's so great. It's the best part of all of this. It truly is. But well, the best go. part is the Green Bay Packers are coming to Nissan Stadium on Sunday, so we got a game to talk about. Yes, yeah. we do. Um, injury report out first one of the week. Titans have three players on the injury report. Defensive tackle Jeffrey Simmons did not practice for rest. Yep. Cornerback Legereus Sneed did not practice for rest. Running back Tajay Spears has an ankle injury. He did not practice. He told the media afterwards, though, he's playing. Yeah, he feels confident. This guy, I, I, he was out at practice with his gear on, standing behind the team, just sort of stalking back and forth. I mean, he's that guy. He 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 believes he's playing on Sunday. Well, I mean, and maybe he is. There's such if he is or he isn't. Um, there's definitely such thing as uh, mental reps, and um, you know, a lot of there was only like a handful of games or times that I didn't practice, but I like to take that um, positioning all the way in the back where the defensive back coach normally stands um, just so I can see it from that angle. You know, most of the time we're on the side looking, but Tajay being a running back, having that, you know, um, angle standing behind his position and just kind of watching, he can still see the pieces move and understand how, okay, he might have to hit the hole on this play, hit this one faster or hit this play like this or the different things that he could do without actually getting out there and taking the rep. So the fact that he's in tune, um, the way that you're speaking about, you know, all that <laughs> at this level, all that psychology makes a difference. It's not just psychology with him or mental reps. I or think they probably said, Buddy, you can be in the training room you if you want to, and he said no. No, like I, I mean, we haven't had a lot of guys quite. I mean, there was one week last year where we didn't think he was going to play, and then he was out at practice on Thursday, and you're like, okay. Yeah, I think I think he is somebody that 
You know how they put the trackers in everybody's jersey right. now? I think they probably have to keep pretty close tabs on Tajay's because he probably lies a lot. Like, <laughs> did you get – how many reps have you done? Like, uh, I don't know, six? <laughs> it's like, no, this says 48. Uh-huh. Like, get that, out of there. That's interesting. I think <laughs> I think they have to save him from himself a little bit. I think bit. you're right. Well, here it comes. <laughs> Back in my day. Oh, hey! Wait a minute. It's only been six minutes. <laughs> six minutes <laughs> into the new studio. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't track how many practice reps or anything like that. And honestly, you would have to be outside for practice. So it wasn't one of those things that if you weren't practicing that you can stay in the training, training room, room all the mm-hmm. time. You had to be outside before – you know, individual was over. So you're going to be there to get those reps, whether you want to or not. And then you go in at the end. So I, I guess it's different. But um, like I said, once a, once a show, it's going to be a back in my day. Is it going to be <laughs> once a show? That's or? it. Oh, That's I don't it. think so. No, I'm going to limit myself because, yeah, it's just going to be – that was the this week's segment of back in All right, we'll see if we day. make it all, Trust all four – I'm good at this. Segment. We'll see. Okay, Packers um, injury report. Limited participation today. Tackle Rashid Walker, shoulder. Tackle Zach Tom, quadricep. Center guard Josh Myers, ankle. Tight end Tucker Craft, shoulder. Running back Josh Jacobs, back. Defensive lineman Kingsley Enigbare, groin. And defensive lineman Kenny Clark, toe. And Jordan Love. Jordan Love was a limited participant in practice with a knee. Keith Bullock, if you're preparing for this game and you see that Jordan Love was a limited participant in practice today, in your mind, are you betting that Jordan Love plays Sunday at Nissan Stadium? No, nah, I'm not betting on that at all. You know, I, I'll wait to see if it happens. You know, if he's, if they say that he was a full participant tomorrow, if that's what it comes out tomorrow, then it might raise my eyebrows a little bit. But um, first things first, you know, they – have to see if he's going to be able to protect himself out there. And being that it's only the third game of the season, it's an AFC, NFC type of game in September. Um, And I say in September because the way I look at um, the new NFL is, you know, with only three preseason games and a lot of the teams seem to just be using them as to see how we're going to fill empty spots on the roster or build that back end part or special teams. Um, you know, the starters really don't get a real full go until week one, week two, week three. So September, uh, essentially, although it's entertaining for us as the spectator and the fan, we got football back. Um, I think more so for coaches, new head coaches, new quarterbacks, new coordinators, all the newness of these organizations all around the league of course we're focused here on the titans because we're zero and two and all these things but all these teams are trying to figure things out and i think september is going to turn into that month you can go one and three or two and two or an zero and four and still have a great season with five losses or four losses six losses and make the playoffs so i think the landscape um has changed so saying all that it doesn't make sense for them to rush Jordan Love out there because I think it would be rushing. You know, it's an MCL. It's not an ACL or anything like that. So, you know, he is going to come back. But I think, um, look, you, you, you squeezed one out without him. Um, you see what you can do this week. And it's just great that he's actually out there being able to be mobile. So if he comes back, you know, after the Titans, we love that. Next opponent for them at Green Bay, Minnesota. Does that make a difference if you're them? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the one. Like, if he can get out there and, you know, look, if he can dress on, on Sunday, I'm happy because then that means I can put a game plan. If I'm Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Packers, I can put a game plan together that, you know, Jordan Love can possibly go out there and execute and or put a game plan together that I can use dual quarterbacks In a conference game, the Minnesota game counts two um, versus one playing the Tennessee Titans being an AFC team. Especially Minnesota is going to come into that 
no worse than two and one. If they beat Houston, they're three and zero oh coming into that game. Right. So there's definitely. I think that's one that. I mean, I mean, you would imagine. Sense. Yeah. So if it is Malik Willis, let's put you back back in your day. Yeah. If we <laughs> nope, it. we already used one. Yeah. Sorry. If we had, everybody gets one. <laughs> everybody gets one. That's right. If if he had been your teammate. And he was coming in here less than four weeks after he had been traded. Do you feel like you have any advantage as a linebacker knowing his game, or is that just silly talk from the outside? Um, I'm laughing because um, – You're not going you, to the Billy Volick thing, are you? Nah, man, you think that you do, but you can't – you cannot do that. Because I remember when I was playing, we were playing against the Giants. I mean, when I was on the Giants – and we played the Titans up there in the Meadowlands. Yeah. And it's like, look, I know what you need to force VY to do, okay? We got to shut CJ down, put Vince in some situations where either he's going to be incredible or, look, he might throw us one or something like that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Um, that being said, <laughs> no, nah, VY, VY, VY did his thing. Like, and then, you know, late in the game, you know, CJ had a run and bust the game open. And, you know, so I just think that it's one of those situations. It's any given Sunday because if this game is close in the third, fourth quarter, and I don't care who's quarterback for, for the Packers, if, if um, the game is close in the fourth quarter and they have the ball, they have a shot. So um, so it doesn't matter. Nah, nah. It only matters if um, you can come out and execute. Cause I, like, we know that the Packers want to run the ball, right? They yes. want to run the ball. So that's cool. Defense knows that they're going to come put 8-9 in a box, force Malik to do something, force the quarterback to do something to show that he can, you know, um, beat them besides the run. After after you do that, you know, you get a few three and outs. The offense has to score. The offense has to answer. So now it's, it's 10-0 going into the second quarter or 14-0 going into the second quarter. You want to put as much many points as you can on a team that's a predominantly run team um, just because it's hard to play catch up. I mean, we've seen that from, you know, Titans teams in the past, just sure. to bring it home a little bit more for the listener. Um, but, yeah, I think this weekend that's what you have to do. Obviously, defense has been playing stout, going to play stout early, snuff out the run. But offense has to make their plays to put points up early. So you're not in a dogfight with a team that you shouldn't be in a dogfight with. Do you know the Billy Volek trade story? <laughs> I don't know that story. I was hoping you'd tell it anyway because well, I, I don't know it. Michael right after it. a break. Oh, oh that's called a tease. It's a Keith Bullock-like tease. <laughs> and his name is in the show. Oh, my god. Titans gosh. Tonight with Keith Bullock, <laughs> presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, continues on Titans Radio. Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, continues from Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Obviously, since his name is in the show, it's Keith Bullock's show. He's here with Amy Wells and me, Mike Keith. You were going to say, you look like you were ready to say something, Amy. Oh, gosh, no. Okay. I, I mean, I can talk. We are on the radio. But, <laughs> is there well, something no, you'd no, like no, to I hear? Did, no, I was going to tell the, the Billy Volick trade story. That's okay, what so, I was waiting for. So, 2006. Okay. Billy Volick's going to be the quarterback. Great. We've drafted Vince Young, but he's not going to be the quarterback. Billy, Billy Volick, Volick is going it, to be the quarterback. It, Billy Volick's going to be the quarterback. So we go to Clarksville to training camp. We go right. to Austin P. And they're lovely people. It was a it was a wonderful experience to be there for a couple weeks. It was a great thing. But there was a controversy almost immediately because there was a report that came out that Kerry Collins was going to join us. As the quarterback. Was that really? Yes. When Billy was here, that was the report? Yes. Because how it got started, this someone from the – to me, everyone. Okay. <laughs> someone from the coaching staff, I don't know who, leaked it to the media. Hmm. Because the offensive coordinator at the time was Norm Chow. Mm -hmm. Norm Chow had no use for Billy Bolick for some reason. Just wasn't his guy. Oh, no. Okay. Was 100% not his guy. 
And he's like, we have to have someone else. So <laughs> the someone else is going to be Kerry Collins, according to the report. They corner the, the late, great Floyd Reese, the general manager, the media does, and they say, hey, when will Kerry Collins be in here? And Floyd looks at him and he goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. More or less. I mean, I'm just the, I'm giving you the short version. He goes, I haven't talked to Kerry Collins' agent. I haven't talked to anybody. So there, there's a mess here. I mean, it, it's really not Man. great. So <laughs> they, the coaches who don't want Billy Volick wow. are keeping this whole thing going. Oh, no. And I don't know that Fisher was involved in this or not. I don't oh, have the no. first idea. But, but Norm Chow really didn't want Billy Volick. So all the Kerry Collins stuff's going on. Well, Floyd Reese is like, we're, we have quarterbacks. We drafted a quarterback third overall. We got Billy Volick. He's been here for a while. We're Billy, good. Yeah, we're good. Billy Volick's going to be the quarterback. <laughs> Interesting. So this keeps going. And finally, they get to the point after something happened in a preseason game where they just say, Billy Volick can't be the quarterback. So they bring in. Kerry Collins, eight days before the first game. Before the first game, nine days, nine what? days. Because like that was like that Friday or well, we Saturday. go because we go to Green Bay and they play Kerry Collins for a minute, and he's been with the team maybe forty eight hours, <laughs> and then we're play- that game was on a Thursday night, right? And then we're playing the Jets, okay. and like we're calling a game with Kerry Collins. That the last preseason game on a Thursday night, mm-hmm. we've never met him. Mm-hmm. We've never seen him. The first time a lot of us saw Kerry Collins was on the field in a Titans uniform because <laughs> he's just gotten there. Because they basically Floyd said, "Okay, fine. You want Kerry Collins? We'll get you. We'll get you. Whatever." What Floyd got seemed like he got frustrated. We end, so Kerry's here. Yeah, we play the Jets. Well, Kerry's not ready to play right you know i mean he's straight off the farm i mean he was really i mean it was tough he hadn't been anywhere and so (laughs) but he's a veteran he was a first round pick where they were giving like their real money and he's a good player (laughs) and i mean we're glad to have carrie this is no rip on carrie it's just the gunslinger why you bring him in 10 days before the first game It it was really interesting so the owner of course likes vince yeah he, you know, he, VY is my guy. That's what Bud Adams said. And so Vince is the next guy. You've brought in Kerry. And so Billy Volick, you're not going to play Billy Volick. So why is he still on the roster, right? Right. Well, they're not going to cut him oh, because no. <laughs> the Chargers want him. Well, guess who we play in week two? The Chargers? In San Diego. <laughs> so everybody knows. Everybody, this is a true story. Everybody knows, the public knows, everybody knows that Billy Volick is going to be traded to the Chargers as soon as our game with the Chargers is over. He was there before then. Because Billy, he, um, so the way as, as a, I remember that, I always thought that, first of all, Billy didn't have a good camp. No, he was he, not he having didn't a have good a, camp. He didn't have a good camp. And as a defense, we used to be on him. Like, you know, he used to talk all the junk. So, like, well, and, and we Billy, had Pac-Man then, too. So, it was, like, <laughs> bad. Crazy. Well, Billy had been with us for seven years. Yeah, he's Whoa. my draft class. He, yeah, so Billy, he was an undrafted who came 2000. in. 2000. Yes, he came in and beat out Kevin Daft. And he had played well for us at different times. He threw for, like, uh, uh, he had a streak of, like, five 300-yard games. Oh, yeah. I mean, he. And yet all this is happening. So all this is this crazy stuff. So he go to play the Chargers. Wasn't tough enough. Yeah, something. Um, so we go play the Chargers, and they're, they're supposedly bad. <laughs> supposedly? Yeah, well, they are. They are getting ready to ditch. Drew Brees and promote Philip Rivers, who they had drafted the year before. That's okay. the room. Okay. All right. They beat us forty to seven. 
Mm, we had a Chargers thing for a while. Oh. I didn't yeah. think the Chargers were supposed to be bad. This is the year LaDainian Thomason ran for – They went broke cra- the record. They went crazy. LT had – uh, no one told me they were supposed to be back because LT had <laughs> but, four touchdowns in the first half. But they had to – We s- were bad. I yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they had to dis- – well, at that point in the season, we were. Because we would start 0-5, eventually we'd almost make the playoffs. That was a weird year. Yeah. yeah. Look. And, but, it was a weird year. Oh, it's so strange. <laughs> but they – but the whole thing is Drew Brees was going to be benched because he, quote, unquote, wasn't any good. He hadn't oh. done anything. He had got hurt, actually, right? And he was coming back. Not at that point. Okay. And so. This is wild. (laughs) Yeah. The whole thing was really strange. Yeah. So, anyway, just to wrap it all up as quickly as possible. So, Billy knows he's being traded. Yeah. So, he has to fly home with us. And then get on a plane and and fly back? And then we trade him. Yeah. And then he goes on and. You know, Drew Brees goes on to New Orleans. Billy becomes Philip Rivers' backup. He ends up having a really nice career. And Vince eventually became our quarterback. Yeah, I mean. It look. was so. <laughs> I mean, we're so. I love the National Football League. I'll just never forget walking to the gym at Austin P at training camp. And I asked a member of the personnel staff. I said, oh, so uh, when will. Because I'd read it in the paper. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, and the guys at the Tennessee and were excellent reporters. And so, I mean, I'm assuming they got it from somewhere. They talked to agents and everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I say something to a member of the personnel staff. I said, so when is Kerry Collins getting here? They're like, what are you talking about? And I thought I'd gone crazy. I thought, okay, I've lost my mind. Yeah. Why? He goes, I don't know anything about that. Well, I think he's pulling my leg or – Thinks he, you're trying to get something right, out of him. Right, I'm trying yeah. to get something out of him, and he's not supposed to tell me it's a big secret or whatever. And then Floyd has the impromptu news conference, and he's like, I don't know anything about this. And yeah. it turns out it was all being worked. He was being worked. Ah, uh, tricky, tricky. Yeah, well, that San Diego game, <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. You uh, lost <laughs> Keith at the San Diego I'm sorry. game. I, like, he's, I didn't, like, he said they were supposed to be bad, but I just, I'll never forget, um, we had, like, a rookie linebacker in the game, and he had to come in for, like, Peter Sermon or somebody, and he's like, what, I call the defense, and then I remember we're in our stance, and he looks over at me, he says, what do I do on this play? Oh boy! Uh-oh. Said, "Hut, here comes a Daniel and Tomlinson, oh, and no. like that's what type of day it was." Mike told you the score; it was pretty crazy. But uh, the fact that we <laughs> were able to turn it around, play. VY run rookie of the year. I always thought Billy Volick quit on us, but I guess um, he didn't want to be here anyway, so it worked out for everyone. No, he he was not. Um, he was not. No, he worked. It worked out for everyone. It was not great. Shout out to my guy Billy Volick. Yeah, well, I mean. Okay, I have my timing off just a little bit. Okay. Philip Rivers was the starter by then. Okay. Philip Rivers was the starter. Uh, so I have that part just a little bit wrong because we had so many bad experiences with in San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> For sure. I don't think we ever had a good experience in San Diego outside of going to the zoo. Uh, um, I had a good time um, at hey. the Super Bowl that year that we lost to the Raiders. <laughs> oh, that, uh, yeah. oh, that was, that was the, a good Super Bowl. <laughs> that was the game that Michael <laughs> Turner, the burner, yes. rushed for 138 yards. Ladanian had two touchdowns. Kerry Collins, oh, boy, that was not good for Kerry. But, I mean, he'd just been with the team for like two a minute, weeks. yeah. Yeah. It's all good. It was really built strange. character. <laughs> it's sad that, that hey, San Diego that is not a good built place character. for you guys. <laughs> it did. Yeah. It really did in a strange way. Yeah. Um, finished. Got one other thing from the injury report. Are you ready for this? So sure. I, I gave me. you the limited participants for the Packers, including Jordan Love. Right. Here's who did not practice: cornerback Carrington Valentine with an ankle. Okay. Their slot wide receiver Jaden Reed, who's off to a really good start this year with a calf injury. Oh. First round pick, offensive lineman Jordan Morgan with a shoulder. Hmm. And then offensive lineman Elton Jenkins listed as did not practice with illness slash glute. 
<laughs> he's sick and he has a, a booty string. <laughs> <laughs> well, mean, as long that, as. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I've been reading entry reports for a little yeah. while. I have never read illness slash glute. I think it's probably best just if going forward across the league, if they say you're sick, like don't even mention someone's hiney because well, no, what but it I evokes th- is something kind of but, not great. But they have to. I know, I know because, they have to. Because if tomorrow the illness is complete, they have to explain why he might he not. He's still not there. Because, I mean, you get fined. No, oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Remember, the Colts got in all that trouble for the way that they were not accurately representing what was fully going on. That was years ago. What, 10 years ago, I think? <laughs> 11, yeah, 12 they got, years they got ago, mad they got at him because they had 32 guys on the. Did you ever hear of the Patriots? Well, so that's why they the do that 2000s? now. <laughs> well, now they just list everybody. Anytime you play the Indianapolis Colts, it's a very long injury report. It sounds like an old Bill Belichick tactic. Uh, you know what I like, though? How short the Titans' the sh- side is. The Titans' is. list is very Isn't short. Isn't this lovely? But illness glute. Illness is, glute. Illness to me slash is kind of glute. Ick. It's I, ick to I me. would say it's great not to have people on the injured list. That means everyone should be able to perform at top notch on Sunday. I there you mean, go. isn't it just a sight to behold? Hey, it's on just Sunday beautiful. with the W, it'll be even better. It See? would be even better. There you go. We need to get a break, and then we're back with more from the new studio at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, home of the Titans. This is Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. Thanks very much, Rhett Bryant. Speaking of fantasy players, you got to have Josh Jacobs, don't you? Third leading rusher in the NFL right now, 48 carries for 235 yards, 32 carries for 151 on Sunday against Indianapolis. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Well, I tell you what, man. <clears throat> I did have one of those top performers last week. I you had did? a young Marvin Harrison Jr. That what's that like? That you've got the son of one of your former college teammates. Oh, it was cool. I mean, it's cool. You know what's really I don't know, to me the coolest moment is like just knowing that, you know, young Marv used to come through the Nike camps, uh, especially like the ones we would hold in Jersey and then Marv would show up and then um a former one, another one of my teammates. A lot of my teammates, college teammates from Jersey that went to Syracuse would show up because their sons might be there. And I mm-hmm. remember <laughs> when um, when Marv Jr. was probably in like 10th, 11th grade, um, his dad would watch from afar. So he'd be, you know, doing his thing off to the side in his drill and Marv would be talking to us, you know, but he would like kind of like turn his head when his drill, his son's drill is up. And then like whatever he would do, he could do it right, wrong, or indifferent. Marv would have like a slight critique from him, but to us, you know what I'm saying? Like okay. he wouldn't, he wouldn't like go to him. He'd be like, especially if he dropped it, like he'd, be like, oh, he'd like throw his hands. Like, see, that's why he's not gonna be good because. But, but mm-hmm. he knows that he trains with his dad, and he probably knows that my dad over there talking junk. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> uh, Marv is a very quiet, quiet person. But I can't, I this, I can't lie. Um, like when I got to college as a freshman, I was just happy when school started so i didn't have so much football like because i had the red shirt it was a little overwhelming at first i needed to red shirt i was one of those kids that needed to red shirt but within my red shirt um i'm on practice squad so we're going against the first team offense and um, that's when i learned who marvin harrison was like on the practice field you know of course we go into games he returned punts then. He's returning punts, catching bombs from McNabb, reverse hand up like he's doing. Like he was a true All American, but I saw what it what it took to go to the NFL, starting with him, and then obviously we had other first rounders after him. But like as an 18 year old kid wearing number 57 playing scout team, <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool to see. Um, you know, he charted all of his. He had he had a GA that just would walk around and chart. Every pass that was thrown to him, and, you know, it was pretty cool. So, yeah, that's where I saw it. Watching him and Peyton Manning warm up together running the route tree Mm -hmm. was one of the most awesome things that I ever saw in person. What made it awesome? Both of them were as serious about what they were doing as the other. They were completely – and 
my understanding is they really weren't. I, I mean, I guess they were friendly, but they weren't pals or anything. They weren't right. Friends. I, I mean, look, I could see that. Like when I was just in um in the oh, no, it felt like I was in Indianapolis <laughs> when I was at the Hall of Fame for Dwight Freeney. Mm-hmm. Like um, all of those guys were there. Marv was there. Um, but at some point, you know, we realized that this is a business. You have a working right. relationship, and that's how you keep it. Because at the end of the day, the same common goal is to win as many games so you can hold that Lombardi trophy. Um, and I can't speak to their friendship, but look, Peyton Manning would be someone hard not to get along with if he's opened up to you. And, um, you know, Marv's a, a little a little quieter. Um, But that being said, I just think it was um, a perfect match that they both had that work ethic Mm -hmm. because, um, you know, obviously that trickled down to to Reggie Wayne, to to Pierre Mm -hmm. Garçon, to anybody that kind of filled in. Dallas um, Clark. Yes, Mm -hmm. Stokely, because it's one of those things that, um, you know, you try and hold it because there was a – to an extent, you know – there's a standard you try and hold even as a defensive leader when I played here there was a standard that I felt that we needed to play to because that was taught to me when I got here so why would I be the one to let the standard slip so um that's how you obviously they did it (laughs) a lot but that's how you know um you get a team to be on the same page you know it's one thing to have leaders that are rah rah, and you talk about doing it, but now nah, you just go to work every day. Go to work, you know. Um, if you're hurt, go go to practice because you see the young guys see you doing it. Like you know, um, they'll do it. I remember like Linda White being like, "Bro, sometimes I, I don't want to practice, but I see you out there practicing. I, I gotta practice. You know what I'm saying? So like all those things go into it. Um, I wish I would have had a greatest effect if Peyton had on his teammates, <laughs> but uh, it worked out. Well, but to watch them, Marvin Harrison was so precise. Yep. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's been well publicized how Peyton Manning is about everything. Yeah. And I can vouch for that from the first moment that he became the starter at Tennessee in 1994 in watching him. Um, and that took some getting used to for teammates. Yeah, because he's 18 years old, and you know, it's like, oh, oh. at that point, you think you think he's just being a tryhard. Look at this yeah. freshman trying yeah. to yeah. brown up, whatever they call it. But my kids call it a tryhard. These days. I'm like, <laughs> that's better, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, there's no such thing as a try. I'm like, yo, after sixth grade, everybody needs to be trying hard. If you're not a tryhard, you're just out there. You know that's what right. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there is something to be said for everyone being on the same page in terms of how we're going to do things, the way it needs to be done, what the correct way to do it actually looks like. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes that's what separates good teams from great or excellent teams. That's right. Is that every single person's on the same page of how we're going to do this. If you get some guys who say, yeah, man, I don't need to do all of that, you're being a tryhard, just to continue with that lingo. I think that you see that more often than maybe we think we do because, well, it's professional football. Everybody tries hard. Everybody is working at a different level. But there are some people who are just different. The like, Peyton Mannings like are different. The Tom Brady's yeah. are different. There are people who have a standard, and if everybody can buy into that standard, right. that's a great football team. And then, but, you know, to be fair, you're going to have those guys that, you know, might not want to tow the rope, but you know you need them. Mm-hmm. So. You got to be like, yo, man, get your ass in here. (laughs) You know what I'm like? Look, I don't care which. You got to challenge them. You know what I mean? And they challenge you back. That's cool. I'll go get Albert. (laughs) You you know what I'm saying? But that's that's the secret to coaching a football team overall. (laughs) And and I know for all the first-time coaches that we've had during my time here, the the thing that you have to learn is – I mean, everybody's completely different in how you sort of pull them into the boat because there are those guys who are going to work as hard as they possibly can to get out of practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be easier on them to practice yeah. than it would be to how hard they try to get out of practice or get out of this or get out of that because they've always done that yeah. Yeah. Their, whole, their whole lives. But guess what? They're good players. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and they realize uh, – Every player, if you play long enough, you realize uh, the value 
you bring to the team besides going out there on first, second, or third down? You know, mm-hmm. like I mentioned, Albert, like he had a value as a leader in a leadership role, whereas it wouldn't be visible to the public. But at the same time, he's going to help me get people in line mm-hmm. because he knows, like, look, like Keith has been our leader. He probably usually says the right things. When we do things like this, things go right, you know, because mm-hmm. within our time playing together, we've had conversations. I'm like, X, Y, and Z, and he's like, man, you said that. That was going to be right, man. Just listen to me, fool. Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Um, but that being said, that then you have other players who maybe mm-hmm. are trying to do their own thing. You got to do certain things to kind of reel them in because not everyone's, you know, built to lead with their voice um, or even their actions all the time. But everyone plays a role on really good teams. You can't really leave even one out. Anyone out. That's from the starters mm-hmm. to um, on offense, defense, and special teams to the backups because you only have 53 men. Like even this Titans team right now, they're 0 and 2, but they're this close. And I'm doing like the little, you know, small. Yes. You know, they're mm-hmm. this close. So they have to stick together. They can't worry about what anyone else is saying outside of this building when they're, you know, riding in their car and they probably don't even listen to a reader or any of that stuff. You know what I mean? But that being said, do you really think they don't? Um, it depends on who you are. I used to like uh, to read the league, the clips from time to time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It wasn't for anything else. It wasn't for any motivation or anything. But every now and then, you come across something somebody would say. You'd be like. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, for real? All right. All right. That's the way it's going <laughs> to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, it, you can always find some type of bulletin board material if you need to. <laughs> we know that 5-3 is Keith Bullock's number. He will always be known as the Titans 53. There's another linebacker wearing 53, and I want to get Keith Bullock's opinion of how he played on Sunday We'll talk Ernest Jones and more on Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners on Titans Radio. Titans Tonight, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners from Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Keith Bullock, Amy Wells, and Mike Keith. All right, so I've, I've been waiting all week to ask you this question. Titans led in tackles on Sunday by Ernest Jones, who was obtained from the Rams in late August. Nine tackles, two tackles for lost yardage. He's wearing your number, 53. Just kind of irony there that we throw in. Uh, <laughs> but He's I mean, not the, the first. The guy, <laughs> the guy shows up. Yeah. What'd you think? Yeah, look, he, he showed up for the Rams, too. He showed up in the first game. Um, he's uh, a downhill linebacker. You know, and in this scheme, it, it works because of, I, I think, that. And I have to watch again this week, uh, a little closer eye. But, yeah, he gets put in the position to attack, and he understands how he, he understands the nuances of defenses because he understand, it seems as if he understands where to be. Obviously, he was a high-volume um, tackler with the Rams um, when he was out there the last few years. And that's what you expect, you know, obviously when he comes here. Uh, Yeah, hopefully he does the same thing and continues to do the same things uh, for the Titans that he um, had did with the Rams. He's a long player. He has long arms. You obviously were the same type of player. Why does that benefit you at linebacker? What's the advantage it gives you? (coughs) Well, for me – I've played in a 4-3. They play in a 3-4. So we didn't have – like if we had uh, T-Sweat and Big Jeff in our defense, they would be getting to the ball. It wouldn't, they, they wouldn't be to hold up linemen for the linebackers to run free. Uh, so for me, it was to get linemen off of me. When I come downhill, I'm going to have to take on a lineman before I get to the ball. I'm not just coming – it's very rare that I'm just coming through the hole and just, you know, arriving at the ball scot-free just based upon – the way our defense worked. You had to double team Albert. You had to worry about Kevin Carter. You had to worry about, you know, whoever you had to worry about. So our front seven was more so uh, every man for themselves. And for me in the run game, I can um, come downhill, uh, you know, make contact with a lineman and kind of keep them away from my body with my long arms. And in the past game, um, you know, I played safety for two years in college. So 
uh, the way I was broken in, I used to cover wide receivers. Um, so a tight end and a running back really wasn't difficult for me as long as I was using the proper technique and doing the things that, you know, I, I trained to do. So that would help because I would get up on tight ends and running backs and actually play press coverage on them like a defensive back, which was very rare for a quarterback to see because that's normally a mismatch. If you have a Tony Gonzalez or a, a Fred Taylor out there on a linebacker, whereas me, I love that matchup because I knew the quarterback thought it was a mismatch, but that to me was an opportunity to make plays. So that's like a high alert for me um, in that situation that uh, Murray was in last week. The way I would have played that, I would have pressed the running back just like a defensive back and pressed him to the sidelines, which would allow me to turn open to the field and play the ball. Because Murray was in great position. Was. He just didn't get his head around. And, you know, to be fair to him, I played defensive back. So I know those different things. So that's what allowed me to excel in the pass game and being long and rangy and using my hands and arms to get off of blocks um, also allowed me to excel in the run game. When you watch the Titans play, especially the defense on the field, do you watch the linebackers or do you watch just kind of the action unfold? What yeah, are you I watch looking the, at? Act the action unfold. I see it as a whole. Um, I'll be watching the Titans on defense and tell the quarterback, throw the ball, like just because <laughs> I'm watching the game, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just watch it as a whole, and then kind of I know why something happened or if they show the replay, I, like I'm, I can dissect it very quickly. So I watch it. I know how an offense should attack a defense. I just watch it as a whole. If you, Mike Keith, are watching a game just for fun, do you watch the ball because that's how you watch a game when you call a game? <laughs> Great Or do question. you just kind of watch it like, like as a whole? I probably just watch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you make calls while you're sitting on your couch? No. <laughs> My that was a weird. dumb question. I, I, no, it's not no. a dumb question, but that would be odd to, I asked to sit there and <laughs> by Mike yourself. Mike does the whole right, thing. That's like, that's like me being, oh, when you go to high school football games, do you want to go get on there? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. No, question. I mean, I, I ask because when I watch a football game, I watch what's going on on the sidelines more than probably the average person would. I notice a lot of very strange auxiliary things because I'm used to doing that. That's where my attention well, just I, goes. Well, for me, it's – I mean, I'm just conditioned in that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there, there are so many things, like, I could know or I could say, but I don't because I know Coach Mack's going to do all that. Right. So my whole thing is who's got the ball, what number they're wearing, and what's their <laughs> name. Yeah. And I where mean, are they? Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. are they, is it right or left? And oftentimes, as you as people have now seen, which kind of troubles me from the camera in the booth, right. I, I have to throw up which side is right and which side is left, mm -hmm. which is kind of sad. You do like this with your hands? I will, yeah. You yeah. know Because I can't remember. I mean, I know, I know what's right and left, but I can't see it. Like, I'm not great with directions. Well, because you have to rotate. You're I seeing it that. from the side. Okay. You've got a vantage point switch. Well, when I was on the field and I would call the <laughs> close call, I would, like, ha well, you know what? It wasn't for me. It was for the back end. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> told everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. It was me, right? But I'll do, I'll do – I mean, I do it every time. It's left to right on your radio dial, or he's yeah. running left, or he's running right, because – Is that why you do that? Yes. Dude, I thought you were just kind of squirmy. <laughs> Well, I am. I mean, I move around a lot, but it's... It, I didn't know there was a functionality behind well, it. Well, I don't... Oh, I, my. I we can't. learn something new every every Wednesday on this show. Well, that's not really good. But that's, <laughs> I think that's great. No, People want to no, know. I've no. worked with you for a really long time, and, and I didn't know And you didn't know, know that. that I don't know my left from my right? I, I didn't, not until I do today. know my left from my right. I just can't always remember it. It's okay. Well... <laughs> it's all right. It's You're good, okay. Mike. Yeah, we're, You're, we're not judging you, man.